Folsom. September 14, 1970. Dear Sister. Our primary interest is to establish a Chicano organization at Folsom, that will work seeking solutions to Chicano problems, and implementing programs for the self-improvement of the Chicano convict. I will briefly state the steps we have taken up to the present time. All this has taken almost two years, a reason why more and more voices are being raised every day for a direct confrontation, either by a demonstration, or a strike by the Chicanos. We prepared a constitution and by laws to govern the group. This was submitted to the warden. After a length of time, he denied permission to form said organization. Thereafter two meetings were held with Mr. Fossman, associate warden, relative to the denial. He suggested that we change our constitution in certain respects to comply and conform with the Department of Corrections Policy Directive regarding self-improvement groups. This was done. It was then submitted to the warden for reconsideration, again, it was denied. Our next step was to ask permission from Mr. Pecunier, Director of the Department of Corrections. We mailed Mr. Pecunier a letter, requesting that he grant us permission to form the organization and enclosed a copy of the Constitution together with a petition signed by about 300 Chicanos. An associate answered, telling us that Mr. Procunior was on vacation, but would consider it on his return. Well, finally we received an answer from Mr. Procunior, stating that he left such decisions to the warden, and if he denied permission then it was final. After due consideration we hit on another tactic on how to bring the issue up again before the warden. We approached it through the prison education department that is. We went to the student advisory council inmates asking their support for a Chicano cultural group under the auspices of the education department. This was no longer the same type of organization. We first envisioned. In any case, after getting the runaround not by the inmates, but by staff responsible for the education department, we finally were able to draw up our proposals to present to the Student Advisory Council. Again, after waiting some time we obtained their support and the proposals were submitted to the warden. Needless to say, that after he kept said proposals for a while he denied them. The above is but an idea of what we have encountered in terms of administrative opposition. Other things were done, but these are the most important. Whether our methods could have been better is now immaterial, the point is that we have complied with all the rules, and have gotten absolutely nowhere. Manuel, Joe Chavez. Folsom, September 14, 1970. Dear Sister Stender. Let me bring you up to date, sister. During the Chicano moratorium in Los Angeles, which turned into a police riot, they call it a Mexican-American riot, two Chicano brothers were killed by the police. The Chicanos here wanted to honor our brothers, one was Ruben Salazar. So we asked permission from the Catholic priest at Folsom for a service in memory of our brother and that he let a Chicano eulogize our brothers before the service. We were even denied this. In any event, our black brothers, the black Muslims, offered to let us honor our brother, at their service. We gladly accepted this opportunity. Two Chicanos spoke at set service, to a chapel mosque filled with both blacks, and Chicanos. You can imagine what the administration thought about this. That blacks and Chicanos got together has perplexed the administration, and they apparently take this as constituting a threat to the status quo, and to their way of operating. Next, we wrote a letter to the warden, signed by 250 Chicanos, asking for an interview with a committee of 10 to discuss Chicano problems, and to see if we could obtain permission to celebrate the 16th of September, Mexican Independence Day. The warden has not given us the requested interview, but, he did talk to one of the members of the committee in fact, he told the Chicano, 
that because we got together with our black brothers we were trying to start an insurrection at the institution, and that he didn't like it. This brings us to a matter that might have repercussions. The black Muslims have invited us to attend their service on Saturday, September 19th, as a means of celebrating Mexican Independence Day. There will be two Chicano speakers, Henry Castro and Jess Conchino. Since the warden has already expressed his displeasure with us having a service together with the black Muslims, it is possible that the speakers will be locked up. Or possibly some of the Chicanos that they have down as being instrumental in trying to form a Chicano organization, including myself. Q. Viva La Raza. Manuel Joe Chavez. Folsom, Sept. 1970. Comrade Mine. I cannot put into words my joy at the prospect of brotherhood between our two families of color. To think, that we might finally put an end to the senseless waste of life and talent, and at the same time put a stop to the vicious exploitation of the Department of Correction. Directed at our family of color, is an emotional joy which transcends my ability to employ words. I can only say that it is a day which shall forever remain among my most precious memories of positive action. Peace and take care. Thomas. Folsom. September 13, 1970. Dearest comrade. There was a eulogy held here at Folsom Prison for Ruben Salazar, by a large percentage of the brown and black population. Due to the fact that racial solidarity and harmony is not acceptable by the prison administration, the following incidents occurred, on date of September 10. One of the Chicano brothers, who attended the brown and black eulogy was confronted while in his cell at building number 3, which is on the main line of prison population, by three correctional pigs. The brother was Padilla, a 60132. He was dragged from his cell by these three pigs, and physically beaten while standing on the tier, was then kicked repeatedly down three flights of stairs. Then taken to the hospital to be medically cleared for isolation purpose. And what appeared to be a very serious condition, was placed in a stripped cell incommunicado. At this time we have no knowledge as to whether he is dead or alive. On the date of September 10th, one of the Chicano speakers at the eulogy, Brother Jose Anat, a 52561, was attacked by three correctional pigs. Chained and shackled and physically thrown on a CDC bus for a destination listed as Susanville, but true destination unknown. On the date of September 11th, Warden Craven of this prison confronted Jose Castro, and stated that he would tolerate no form of unity between black and brown prisoners, and would crush it according to our famous phrase by any means necessary. Due to the fact that the prison chaplain refused to let the Chicano population hold a eulogy for Ruben Salazar, the inmate Muslim minister here at Folsom, gave the time and so-called privilege allowed for Muslim services to the community efforts for this eulogy. As the result of the Muslim minister's cooperation in this humane matter, the warden Craven also confronted the Folsom Nation of Islam and stated that any and all Chicano participation in any Muslim services of the future were definitely forbidden by he and the total prison administration. All power to the people. Years in struggle, years in peace. Bro. Alfred Hassan.